it, it never was about, when they've really got in the game, it was never about their healing. It was about what do I need to change in order to heal. When the game goes like that, so then the person who's feeling lack, on some level or another, it's not just in the mind, it's in the body, right? So let me, say, let me hear you say that again. When someone's looking for abundance, it's never about the abundance, it's about the change they need to make for no, healing? No, the, the ch what, I'm using healing as an example, yes. but let's use abundance as an example. Yes. When, when you understand that you cannot get abundant, when it's no longer about the game called abundance, it's about the game called change. Mm -hmm. What do I need to change? The more I change, the more I'll be abundant. Yes. So then it's no longer about, well, I haven't, how come it hasn't happened? That's the old personality, separate mm -hmm. from the experience, still in lack, asking that question. Which is creating your current reality. Which is, which is reaffirming it because that's the lens you're perceiving it through. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so we should be focusing more on what we need to change every moment as opposed to the abundance or the healing. Well, the word meditation means to become familiar with. Sit with yourself long enough and not turn on your cell phone, not yeah. scroll through your social media, do no TikTok, no emails, no, none of that stuff. Don't just sit and close your eyes and, and watch the thoughts that come up. Those, that's the exact reason why you're not abundant. Watch what you want to do when you're feeling lack to take away the lack and there's always something you would do to, to take it away. But, but sit with the lack and be curious on what's on the other side of it, right? Mm -hmm. Because the body's programmed into lack now subconsciously, right? So the emotion of lack drives our thoughts and drives our behaviors. So it makes sense then that if an emotion is a record of the past, then we're doing things habitually from the past. Mm -hmm. We're thinking in the past, right? So, so lower the volume to the emotion every time you notice lack comes up. And just like breaking any addiction, there's gonna be cravings, right? So the body's going, <laughs> yeah. hey, Lewis, it's been about two hours since you're you You're so thought. used to doing this Yeah, thing. you've been thinking lacking thoughts about 150,000 times a day, and you're just gonna stop now. <laughs> the, body's gonna, the body's gonna start influencing the mind and say, yes. it's not gonna work, you're a loser, it didn't work before, it's too hard, or everybody else. That's, that's why it's so hard for people to like lose weight or get in shape, same, because you might this, try it for a few days, and then the cravings, or I'm tired, and I wanna go yeah. default back into the old personality. Right, because why? Because the body, which has been conditioned the mind, the body is the unconscious mind. So the body's got used to the familiar feeling, even mm -hmm. they don't even know it's lack. It's just how they feel. It's so not do, guilt. So, okay, right. so let me finish. So, yeah, okay, so the hardest part about all of this is making a different choice. And the moment you decide to make a different choice, get ready, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. Right. It's gonna feel unfamiliar. Your, your body's all of a sudden saying, hey, Lewis, uh, why don't you start thinking those same exact thoughts, mm -hmm. do the same things, make the same choices, demonstrate the same behaviors, have the same experiences. So you could feel that feeling of lack, complain again to somebody, call somebody up and say how, how miserable your right. life is, right? <laughs> and that's, that's the known, right? So the body is always influencing the mind to return back to the familiar territory. To the default. Yeah. The default, okay. All right, so now the person says, okay, what thoughts do I not want? What, what, would an abundant person think this way? The people in our work that have created, mm. I had a guy come to our event, I, I love this guy. He healed himself, of, he, t he tried to take his life three times. When he, he told me that when he came to our work, he didn't have two dollars to rub together. He's worth hundreds of millions of dollars wow. now. And he just keeps giving it away. Wow. His, his lesson, his lesson was, and that wasn't the wealth, it was who he became. So it's the overcoming process that is the becoming process. Right? Who did he become in that journey? Exactly. He had to get beyond all of those thoughts of his past, all the mistakes he made, all the things he did wrong, all the money he owed there, all of that. That was like, he just had to no longer be that person any longer. Mm -hmm. But he did say, how would a wealthy person live? And, and, and when he, created his wealth, what do you think the first thing he did? Started giving? Giving it away, why? Because an abundant person doesn't have any lack mm -hmm. and he knows how to create more of it. And that's, he's in the experiment. Well, what would happen if I keep giving it away? He keeps getting more. That's a good experiment to have because he is actually living in that abundant state. He also had tremendous healings taking place because when you heal your heart, you heal your mind. I mean, it's just the way it is. We saw it so many times, right? So he healed his heart. He got an wow. upgrade. He got an upgrade, right? Yeah. So then the, the next fundamental question is, 
How would an abundant person think? Write it down, dude, and fire and wire those thoughts in your brain and install the hardware. Keep doing it with attention and intention. It becomes the new voice in your head. It becomes a software program. Then say, okay, how am I gonna be in my life today? What would an abundant person, how would they behave? And before you reach for your cell phone and start scrolling through your social media, close your eyes and rehearse in your mind how that person would walk, how they would breathe, how they would smile, how they would mm. greet people, how they would be on Zoom calls, how would they be in traffic, how would they be at dinner? And, and the act of closing your eyes and mentally rehearsing the act, mm. if you're truly present, the brain does not know the difference between the real life experience and what you're imagining. In fact, just a little bit of time, you start to install the neurological hardware to look like you already did it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past, it's primed for the future. Keep doing it, keep rehearsing. No different than playing an instrument, no different than learning how to dance, no different than learning how to act uh, or play a sport. Everybody's mm -hmm. always rehearsing, right? The rehearsal process changes the brain to look like you've already done it, you've already experienced it. Now what's the essential part of that? The hardware is in place. Now all you gotta do is step into the footprint. Mm. You keep doing it, it becomes a software program. You start acting like an abundant person. Everything changes, your energy changes, your mood changes, the way you walk, the way you breathe, your posture changes. You're out of the known, right? Yes. You gotta condition the body now emotionally into the future. Can't open your eyes in the morning until you are feeling <laughs> worthy to receive. And if you can't feel worthy to receive, then if not now, when? If it takes you two hours to get there, ask me if it's worth 30 years of running, trying to get what you need matter to matter. Okay, so then the person who wrestles with their lack, they're out of the bleachers and they're on the playing field. Yeah. Now here's what we learned. Here's what we learned. Let's go back to beliefs now. So remember, belief is just the thought you keep thinking over and over again. A belief is something that you keep thinking enough times that you hardwired in your brain and it becomes an automatic program. And we have beliefs about all kinds of things, money, relationships, God, whatever it is. It's all based on what we've been told or our past experiences, right? The boundaries of those beliefs are our emotions, right? So let's just say you got betrayed or somebody abused you or mm -hmm. your father told you that money was bad and there's never enough of it or whatever. That's a story, okay? But, but somehow it left an impression on you. Remember that event very clearly, and that's kind of rooted in who you are, right? Okay, so that emotion then is the boundary of our belief, okay? So how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. If you take a thought and a feeling, 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 that's called an attitude. A series <laughs> of good thoughts with a series of good feelings, you say, I have a good attitude today. You have a series of negative thoughts that are connected to a series of negative feelings. You say, I have a bad attitude today. So attitudes are just shortened states of being. Good attitude in the morning, bad attitude in the afternoon. If you take an attitude, an attitude, an attitude, and you keep those up, and you string attitudes together, you create what's called a belief. Mm -hmm. And a belief is just an extended state of being. So if you keep thinking the same thought, you keep hardwiring it in the brain, you keep feeling the same feeling, you keep conditioning in your body, the redundancy of that cycle over and over again conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind of that belief. And all beliefs are subconscious states of being. Mm. Okay. Take a belief, a belief, a belief, and you string them together, you form what's called a perception. And perceptions are just such extended states of being that we're unconscious, and so then we, we edit out reality. In fact, most people don't see things the way they are, they see things the way they are, yes. right? And people are always filling in reality unconsciously based on their memory. They could be married to a person for 40 years, and they don't see the person, they see the memory of the person, right? Mm -hmm. And there's research to prove this, okay? So how do we change a belief or perception about ourselves or our lives, okay? We've studied this. Okay, let's just say that lack is ingrained in there. You got the story, you lived on the streets, you lost everything, you got betrayed, your business partner took everything, took your wife, took, you got the story in the half, yes. okay? Okay, you gotta start telling a new story of the future, right? You gotta believe in that future more than you have to believe in the past, so how do you do that? Mm -hmm. You only believe in the past when you feel the emotions of the past. The only time you're gonna believe in the future is when you feel the emotions of the future, right? Okay, so in order for 
us to change a belief or perception about ourselves and our lives. We have to make a decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision carries a level of energy that's greater than the hardwired programs in uh -huh. your brain and the emotional conditioning in your body. And your body literally has to respond to your mind. That the choice that you're making to change <laughs> in that moment becomes a moment in time that you never forget. And here's the key. Physically. Physically. The stronger the emotion you feel when you make that choice, the more you'll remember the decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then how do we down-regulate that old belief? If the trauma created an emotional quotient of six or seven, then your decision to change your beliefs got to be a nine. Right. And you got to come out of your resting state and that moment has to define you. You could say, I know exactly where I was, the time of day it was, who I was with, when I made my mind up to change, mm -hmm. right? Because you created a long-term memory. Long-term memories are created With from strong emotion, emotion yes. right? But if the amplitude of that emotion is greater than the betrayal, boom, the body starts responding to the mind. And you're actually giving your body a taste of the future emotionally. So you brand your- What's you, possible? No, your body's actually getting the taste of that future event. It's experiencing the future now. Now, exactly. It, Big yes. explosion in the quantum field. Ah. Big explosion. So the side effect of that is if you combine that clear intention with that elevated emotion, you're basically remembering your future and it looks no different than remembering your past. Think neurologically within the circuits of that memory and feel within the emotions of that new belief and watch your life begin to change because nothing changes in our life that we change. And when we change our energy, we change our life. So now the experiment all of a sudden is no longer based on it being hard or trying or wishing or wanting mm -hmm. or hoping. That's what we do when we're, lack, when we're in lack or separation. It's about change. So then when we finally realize in order for us to become abundant, we have to overcome the old personality. And that's 95% of who we are, right? Yes. So then the side effect of the beginning of this process is a lot of discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of discomfort because you're stepping outside the known into the unknown and now you can't predict. It's scary. It's, no, no, it's you'd, ra you'd rather so hold on to your lack. The pain, the and suffering. You'd rather tell the story of that. At least it makes you feel something that's familiar. Mm -hmm. When you step outside and you're saying, I'm not going to complain about money any longer. I'm not going to complain about I don't have any. I'm not going to judge other people who do. I'm not going to say I can. I'm not worthy. It's never going to work. All those things got to go. I'm not going to feel lack. I'm not going to feel unworthy. I'm not going to feel separation. I'm not going to feel resentment. These are the things that are keeping my reality the same. Now it's no longer about abundance, it's about who you become. Mm -hmm. So the overcoming process becomes the becoming process. And so many people come to this work, they want abundance, they want healing, they want a new relationship, they want a new career, they want the mystical, but really they want wholeness. And, and they want healing, they want peace. They want, they want wholeness. Because they feel unwhole. Well, well, when you're in lack or you're in separation, you're not whole. Mm -hmm. Imagine feeling so much wholeness that's impossible to want. That's what our that's what we're working on with people. Then you can really enjoy a sunset. Then you can really enjoy a meal. Mm -hmm. Then you can really enjoy your friends. Then you can I, I I I talk to people that are very abundant. I mean, in the billions abundant. And you know, so many of them say, We are in misery. So we're, in our whole. we're in agony because they can't enjoy life anymore. That's what they want. I mean, people want abundance to be able to enjoy life. They want to be able to do whatever they want with whoever they want as many times as they want wherever they want. That's freedom, right? Or people want abundance. The sponsoring thought is really they want freedom, right? Or whatever their sponsoring thought would be, right? So, so then creating from the field instead of from matter to shorten the distance between cause and effect requires that clear intention with that elevated emotion, coherent brain and coherent heart. Tune into that energy and feel it with your brain and your heart. I mean, we have plenty of ways to do that. Examine your personality and examine your personal reality. Change your personality, change your personal reality. Don't make it be about abundance, make it about becoming abundant by overcoming the person who's not abundant.